the elementals have challenged the greatest heroes in the land to take the immortal paths. An ancient trial of fire, earth, and water. Many try, but few will win. Summon crossings of stone, wood, and rope as you take your path to glory. You will need all your powers of skill and wits in this strategy card game for up to four players. Take your hero on a journey through fire, water, and earth, summoning bridges to build your immortal path through these obstacles to gain the most points. Let us begin this quest. You'll need two to four players to play immortal paths. There are two types of card decks, the obstacle deck and the bridge summoning deck. To set up a game, place the obstacle deck to the left of the play space. Then lay out the nine obstacle cards thus. On the other side, place the bridge summoning deck. Take the hero cards and lay them out in two lines thus. Gather the top line of cards together and shuffle, dealing out a card to each player. This will be the player's chosen hero for the journey. Now remove the unused hero cards from that line and the unused duplicates from the second line and put them aside. With the hero's duplicate cards, gather them together and give them a shuffle. Then place them at the starting points face down. Then turn them over. Place the original copy of your hero in the same order on the right side, like so. Now you have determined your hero's path and the order for play during the first draft of the bridge cards. Here we have created a game for two players. Additional hero cards will be placed for three to four player games above and below the starting point. Let play begin! At the start of the game, each player will need two bridge cards in their hand. A player turns over the first obstacle card. Next, they draw three bridge cards and lay them out next to the hero cards on the other side. Players must always draw one more bridge card than there are players. Order the bridge cards with the highest value card at the bottom and lowest value at the top. The value is the number in the corner of each bridge card. The first player will then choose one of the bridge cards. In this instance, it is the wizard. In turn, they will replace that card with their hero card. The orc will then choose and replace their selected bridge card with their hero card. The remaining bridge card is discarded. The order that the hero cards end up in will determine the order in which players draw bridge cards in the next round. This is then repeated so each player has two bridge cards to play in their hand. Now players start building their immortal paths. To build your path and place bridge cards, you need to pay careful attention to the line of obstacle cards. Obstacle cards and bridge cards have elemental connectors. They're the small colored dots at the top and bottom of each card. There are three types, red fire, green earth, and blue water. The bridge card you place must have at least one matching element connector with the obstacle card. In this game, the obstacle card is the mine. It has a red fire and a green earth connector. Your bridge card must also have either a red or green connector on it for it to be placed. The wizard has placed a bridge card which has a red connector on it. The orc has also placed a bridge card with a red connector on it. They turn over the next obstacle card. This time, it is the ancient aqueduct. Players pay attention to the connector on it. It has a blue water connector. The bridge card the player chooses to play will need a blue connector in order to play it. However, they will also need this next bridge card to connect to one of the previous bridge cards in their path. For instance, the next card the wizard lays must have a blue element connector and then at least be able to complete the redstone bridge or the green rope bridge half to play it. Now the players have only one bridge card left in their hand, so it is time to draw another. The players repeat the bridge card drawing phase. Each player will always have two bridge cards in their hand before playing one of them. 
players must pay attention to the current obstacle cards, elemental connectors, and their previous bridge cards, bridges in their paths when drawing. The wizard in this round has played a bridge card with a blue elemental connector to match the ancient aqueduct obstacle. His placed card also has a red stone bridge and a green rope bridge half. This new card will complete both the stone and rope bridges on the previous card. This means the card can be played. The orc has no bridge cards with matching elemental connectors to connect to the obstacle. Therefore, he must choose one of his bridge cards to be placed face down. The next obstacle card is revealed. Each player selects another bridge card for their hand and then tries to play one to match against the obstacle. This is repeated until all nine obstacle cards have been revealed and each player has laid down nine bridge cards. As previously mentioned, if none of the bridge cards in a player's hand have an elemental connector to match the obstacle card, or is able to complete any of the previous bridge card's bridges, the player must choose one of their bridge cards in their hand to play face down in their path. In this example, the wizard has no bridge cards that would connect with the second ancient aqueduct. They choose to play one of their bridge cards in their hand face down. A playable bridge card must always connect to at least one obstacle's elemental connector and complete one bridge, improving your immortal path. When starting either the third, sixth or final obstacle round, players each draw and select bridge cards for that round. However, they then have the option to swap one of their bridge cards that has already been placed in their path before they play their next bridge summoning card. This means players can swap a card that is face down in their path with one in their hand that is playable. They could also swap a face down card with a card that has already been played. They could swap two cards with each other that are face up and have been played if it gives the player a better scoring combination. However, they can only play one of these actions per swapping round. They must make sure their bridge cards connect to the correct elemental connector on the obstacle cards and that their placed card forms at least one complete bridge either side of the connecting bridge cards. Players do not have to swap cards if they do not wish. They can only swap cards in the third, sixth and ninth rounds of play. In this example, the sixth obstacle card has been revealed and the bridge cards drawn. The Orc has not yet played their sixth bridge card. They choose to swap a face down card with one of the two cards in their hand. This card connects to the green obstacle elemental connector and the two blue wooden bridges either side. They now have the card they swapped it with back in their hand and continue to play the sixth round. Drawing bridge cards is strategic and a huge part of the game. Depending on what bridge cards players choose affects the draw order in the next round. Players must balance choosing higher scoring cards with drawing later in the next round. Choosing a lower scoring card will enable a player to draw first in the next round. In this example, the wizard chooses first and chooses the middle bridge card, whereas the orc chooses second and chooses the top bridge card. This means the order to draw cards in the next round would be the orc first and then the wizard. Players must choose wisely to develop their own path, but also be aware of competitors' choices. Choosing a competitor's desired card may make the difference between winning and losing. Once players have played their final bridge card, it is time to total up the scores. Scoring is calculated by adding the points of connected bridge cards together and multiplying those points by the number of completed bridges in the chain. Do this for each complete chain of the same type of bridge, stone, wood, and rope. Then add together each bridge type score to reach the final points for that player. For this example, we will examine the orc score. Let's start with the red stone bridges. We have one red stone bridge in a chain. It is over two bridge cards. 
The total of those cards added together is three. Two for the first and one for the second. Multiply that by the one red stone bridge to get three points. This means the total number of points scored from all the red stone bridge chains is three. Let us now look at the blue wooden bridge chains. We have two wooden bridges in a chain over three cards. The connected card's point total is five. Multiply the five points by the two wooden bridges in the chain makes ten points. Further along, we have one wooden bridge over two cards. The total value of the cards is two. Multiply that by the one wooden bridge makes two points. Add those two totals together gives the player 12 points. The total scored for all the blue wooden bridge chains is 12 points. Repeat this for the green rope bridge chains. The orc scored 18 points from the rope bridges, adding the three bridge scores together of three, 12, and 18 gives the player a final score of 33 points. Once all the player scores have been totaled, the player with the highest score wins the game. Now, it is your turn to become a hero of the Immortal Paths.